Hi, my name is Lindsay Woodsmong, and I'm one of the co-pastors here at Foothill Community Presbyterian Church. And this is our fourth week of Worship Around the Neighborhood, the week of November 22nd. So we're all gearing up for Thanksgiving at this point and um, either planning or grieving the fact that we cannot plan some of our um, typical traditions for Thanksgiving and for connecting with others. And so as we come to this week, um, this is also the last week of your Worship on the Neighborhood boxes. Uh, presuming, of course, I'm pre-recording these videos, but presuming that we've received a lot of positive feedback about these uh, Worship on the Neighborhood experience, you should be hearing some more information about if and when we will have another round of Worship on the Neighborhood for you to pick up at the church. Um, and you can watch our uh, Facebook feed to see when our um, interactive event will be our interactive event where you can return your unused uh, materials. And of course, we're going to let those sit out for about a week so that any virus on them has uh, dissipated and will sanitize anything that we reuse. We're going to have a sidewalk chalk in the parking lot for us to for you to come by, grab some sidewalk chalk and share with others what you want to give thanks for regarding worship around the neighborhood. And it might be as simple as some words for those of us that are a little bit more artistic. It might be a stained glass heart. Um, all of these different things as a way to give testimony and be that salt and light to the world and um, share and give thanks in kind of a worshipful way. For our November week of November 22nd, we are going to be continuing with Matthew chapter 25. Now we at Foothill are one of the many Presbyterian churches that have signed on to the Matthew 25 initiative, which talks about combating poverty, eradicating the uh, systemic racism, and uh, really seeking to revitalize the life of the church. And Worship on the Neighborhood is one of the ways that we're seeking to do that. Um, all of those come rooted in this passage from Matthew, the end of Matthew 25, where Jesus talks about really seeing the needs of the world and responding, and that when we respond, it is as if we are responding to Jesus himself. So let's look at that opening devotional that is offered to our families or bubbles or households. In this passage, we're, in this uh, devotional rather, we're going to be focusing on Psalm 100, which also connects with caring for others. Psalm 100 talks about how uh, we are like sheep in God's pasture. It's the scripture reading that is used on Good Shepherd Sunday. It is the scripture reading that helps us to remember that God is a caring God that scoops us up, that seeks after the lost sheep. Um, all of those images are meant to come back to our hearts as we hear this psalm. And so you're going to be challenged uh, with two different activities for that opening devotional, if you so choose. The first one is to really just make a list of those who might be hungry or thirsty or strangers or sick or lonely or in prison, uh, just amongst your group. And it might startle you, uh, the folks that you collectively know who are in prison or whose family members are in prison or whose family members are sick or those who are really struggling in this time. And it allows you to lift them up in prayer. And especially for the lonely, as we look into the, what a pandemic Thanksgiving and Christmas might look like, be mindful of what are we called to do, answer the call. What can you be called to do to care for those who are lonely um, in this time as we look forward towards Thanksgiving? Uh, there's also a beautiful vision because sometimes we read that we consider those heavy things and we get torn down. And Psalm 100 is also a celebration. And so the next activity is making popcorn, especially if you have one of those air poppers and watch the popcorn kind of overflow and allow that to remind you of how God's love overflows in our lives and uh, feel free to snack on the popcorn afterwards. Um, the next, the, now I'm gonna review the two activities that are included in uh, living, learning and growing as disciples. The first one is the response center. So you can't come to this with a bad attitude. I'm gonna just tell you, it'll flop like nothing's ever flopped before if you come to this activity with a bad attitude. You gotta to come to it with like, all right, we're gonna figure this out. Um, engineers are great at this. Um, so this little uh, flower white contraption has a rubber band on it. Let me get that in front of the camera, a rubber band on it. You can undo it. 
inside you'll find whatever I found as craft supplies at the church. So you might have construction paper, popsicle sticks, Q-tips. Um, I sanitized my hands with wearing gloves and masks as I assembled these. And um, so it's all safe. You're gonna find a bunch of stuff. Feel free to run around your own house to find things, but your task is to build the kingdom of heaven out of all of this weird stuff. Use your markers or your pencils that we included earlier. Um, if you didn't get to do one of the other crafts and you have leftover clay, feel free to use the clay, but have fun as a community building a vision of what the kingdom of heaven is. Because when we live into that vision in this world, we actually experience the kingdom of heaven. As Presbyterians, we like to emphasize the fact that Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That doesn't mean you get to, you have to die to experience it. It means that when we connect with the Holy Spirit, when we connect with hope, we actually experience it right here and now. And we have the opportunity to share that with others. So build it, be creative, figure out how to get your popsicle sticks to be caring for one another as if they're people. Have a lot of fun with that. Um, the next activity is called, Do You See Me? And this is, um, so the first one's a little bit more of that upbeat celebration. The second one's a little bit more of that profound reflection. And in your box, we had to adapt this slightly because we couldn't really put a cup of water in your box. Um, so you will find a cup that we encourage you to fill with water as a symbol. Or if you have multiple people, you can give everybody their own cup of water, paper cup. You'll find some band-aids and you'll find three pictures that also have a paper clip on them, a welcome mat, a loaf of bread, because we decided not to put the bread in the box, because it would have been gross by the fourth week. And also, we don't know if you're gluten-free, so that's gluten-free bread if you need that. And a man with handcuffs. And um, we also have post-it notes. And I think that's all of those activities. The idea is that you read this scripture reading or the adapted version that's on the next, the following page. And then you slowly pass those items around, or you just, if you're um, in a gathered community where you're not in the same household, you can put all of these symbols in the middle of the table so that you're still somewhat socially distanced and you aren't all touching the same materials, but everybody can really get a visual of each of these. And ask people to really just hear, as they hear the scripture reading, focus on one and then focus on the next and then focus on the next. If you are in the same household or these are folks you're bubbling with, feel free to pass the symbols one to another and have folks, you know, hear the scripture reading with um, while they're looking at the band-aid so that they can really um, meditate on it. And then um, after you lay the symbols back out, hand out those post-it notes and ask people, um, to reflect on who they're seeing or do they see folks that are struggling in that way. So next to the Band-Aid, you might be putting the name of someone you know who's in the hospital. Um, you might be putting down the name of someone you know or just folks that are struggling with addiction. And then after everyone's kind of laid out a ton of Post-it notes, with names or context to kind of really get us thinking about these symbols. Then we kind of close with the question, do you see me? And allow folks to really say, you know, recognize where am I not seeing the folks that God wants me to see and how can I see them more? Um, so the special readings this week are super long, fair warning if you've been really reveling in the poetry the prose passage is quite long, but it, it is a profound reading that talks about the life, death, and, and resurrection of Jesus and how do we um, allow that understanding of Jesus' resurrection to uh, enlighten our reading of this passage. So it is still a good passage, but um, it might be longer and you may choose to read it in, in sections and discuss as you go. Um, and then of course, we close with our children's activity sheets which are always a lot of fun, but they also give us some ideas. So a lot of folks, as they go into Thanksgiving, especially if you will not be able to have a big Thanksgiving like you typically would, here are some visuals that we're giving children, but also hopefully will inspire us as adults for how can we show gratitude by caring for others. 
is it volunteering at the Lord's Pantry or dropping off a ton of extra groceries at the Lord's Pantry or extra paper bags or medical bottles? Is it um, helping a neighbor? Is it um, delivering a meal to somebody's doorstep so that they can have some kind of connection? Or is it creating a Zoom Thanksgiving with folks that are too at high risk to participate, but that we can close a little bit of that? Uh, separation and really live as grateful people by including God's blessings with others. Thank you for participating in Worship Around the Neighborhood. As I said in the introductory vi video, this was the brainchild of one of my children who longed to be a blessing to others as he missed Sunday school and growing in faith at church. I hope that this has been an opportunity for you to experience spiritual growth and conversation in your COVID bubbles. And I hope you've had the courage and the intentionality to share those stories and God sightings back with us. If this has been meaningful to you, please, please, please let us know so that we know to make another round of worship around the neighborhood. If you don't have a church home, now you've got a flavor of who Foothill is, how we're a little bit messy, a little bit goofy, and desperately seeking to be faithful in a bunch of different ways. And we hope that you will find um, your faith home with us. Also, if ministries like this are meaningful to you, please like us and share us on Facebook or through your YouTube connections. And, um, and also feel free to give a donation to our church. If you have a special offering you would like to give to the Lord's Pantry or someone else, you can designate those gifts. But most of all, we want to be a place where we can live in gratitude together and generosity together. So we hope that this has been a blessing to you. We hope that you will continue to connect with us as a family of faith and a community of faith. And as always, with Christ's love, may you answer the call, connect with hope, and care for neighbors. See you next time.